Welcome back to Harrelson and Trumpets. Today we are going to be reviewing another mouthpiece and it looks like that will be the Stork 7P right here. So I don't remember exactly, but um, you know, I, I've known Stork for a long time and uh, I have a, a funny story about that. But I think the 7P might be a piccolo mouthpiece. Um, I say that because that's the only thing I can make of the P. For some reason I remember that. Uh, it says Vacchiano on it, Stork Custom, and uh, yeah, it's probably a 7 that's shallower. That's what it looks like, and uh, we'll try it out. Of course, there'd be no reason why you can't play it on other instruments like B flat or C as well. Um, but before I review this mouthpiece, let me tell you this quick story about Stork. So when I was in college, I think uh, my sophomore or junior year or somewhere in there, I got a job for the summer playing at a place called Valley Fair. And uh, Valley Fair was this amusement park in Minnesota as part of Cedar Fair. It's like a, a Six Flags. And they have different live performers and dancers and all that stuff. And I performed uh, in their 80s show for, uh, I don't know how long, maybe like five months or something, whatever the whole season was through October. And that show um, had a lead trumpet player and then an alto and tenor sax and bass and guitar and drums and all that kind of stuff. So we played lots of 80 tunes, 80 tunes. And leading up to that, I was very excited to get a new mouthpiece for playing lead because I was just starting to try playing some lead stuff. Um, and I had taken lessons from this great professor and uh, trumpet guru in Indiana, he's just an amazing guy uh, who's no longer with us. And he had recommended that I try uh, buying a, a stork mouthpiece and he had a specific size. I don't remember what size, probably like one and a half C range, you know, somewhere in there. But he claimed that room would be better for me and all these things could help. So I ordered this mouthpiece, um, but I wanted to order it as a lead version, right? So I, I called up stork because back then I don't think you could even order online. And uh, I had like a little catalog that I got from somebody. And I said, look, I, I wanna order a mouthpiece. And it wasn't like what we do here. Um, I, I called on the phone and I talked to Phyllis and she's like, well, what size do you want? And I said, well, I think I want this size. And she didn't ask me what kind of plane I'm doing or anything else. She just said, okay, we'll put you down for it. They charge my credit card. We'll ship it to you when it's done. And that was like probably in February or March. And my gig started probably at the end of May, maybe. Um, so I thought I'd have it in time. I was really excited for it. Started playing the gig. I didn't have any lead type mouthpieces. All my mouthpieces were big orchestral looking things. And uh, long story short, I started the gig, didn't have the mouthpiece. I really hoped I would have it. I felt like I was struggling. I wanted to blame the mouthpiece because I didn't have the right mouthpiece. Of course, I should be able to do that kind of gig um, on a regular orchestra mouthpiece. There's no reason you can't. Um, unless, of course, you're using mouthpiece pressure, and that's what I was doing. I was using a lot of mouthpiece pressure, and I was hoping to rely on a lead mouthpiece to fix those problems. And uh, long story short, I waited for like half the summer and never got the mouthpiece, and I was convinced it must be lost in the mail. Now remember, this is like 25 years ago. Uh, well, longer than 25 years ago. Maybe closer to 30 years ago. So anyhow, I call them and they're like, oh no, we didn't we didn't ship it yet. We haven't even made it. And I'm like, you haven't made it? I was thinking, man, it's been like three or four months. Um, and they're like, yeah, well, we've got a lot of orders, so it'll take a while. The funny thing is now when people wait, you know, two or three weeks for anything from us, they get really upset. If we tell them, hey, you know, we only make those once a year, boy, you wouldn't believe how angry people get at me because I only make some things once a year. But keep in mind, I, I make thousands of different things every year. So there are quite a few of them that are custom and I only make once a year. It's because there's only one of me. Um, I should say you're lucky that I even make them at all or once a year uh, because a lot of that stuff I should just discontinue. It's not profitable to make it more than once a year. And I do have to turn a profit, I'm a business. <laughs> Otherwise we wouldn't be in business. The funny thing is I got real impatient with Stork and I was like, man, is this mouthpiece ever coming? So I finally finished all of my um, shows with that that um, place it was like over 300 shows and um, like it was like November I got my mouthpiece in the mail and I was like oh great now I got my mouthpiece I'll probably never play lead trumpet again at least in my mind back then so I never I played it for a couple days I put it away and then years later I sold it I never really even played that mouthpiece 
And um, it was the only custom mouthpiece I ever ordered in my whole life. And I was upset because I waited like six, seven months for this mouthpiece. It didn't work out for me. Um, that is one reason why when I say, hey, we've got stuff in stock or I have a promotion and I say, hey, it's on Kickstarter or whatever else, that's one reason you guys should probably jump on it when I say it's available. Because, um, and you know, I realized many years later that John and Phyllis Stork were doing everything they could, but they're only two people and people weren't going to pay enough for them to hire more help to get things done quicker. And that's just the nature of a small business. Um, if you go to a bakery, then they may have, you know, a bunch of cup cupcakes and breads and all these different things and if you get there by like eight or nine in the morning half of them are gone and you can complain hey i didn't get any and they'll say well you should come in earlier well, why didn't you make more well we can't really predict how many to make the same exact thing happens with making trumpets and mouthpieces and anything in a small business and in very large businesses they have the exact same problem what happens there though is they may make 10 million of a thing and if they only sell 1 million and they have 9 million left they have to figure out how to make up that loss. Um, sometimes people lose their jobs over that, you know, either because they made mistakes or because they can't afford to keep them on, or they even go bankrupt. Now, maybe they make 10 million and they have demand for 20 million and they can't get the other 10 million and they can't make that profit. That's the reality. You sometimes just don't know what's gonna sell really well or what's not. But in a small custom business like ours, keep in mind there are only three of us here. So it's Jen, Christine, and myself, and then Sean's here you know, part-time just for the summer. So, um, in reality, we're doing everything we can. If you're ordering custom mouthpieces from other places, you can have the exact same problem. Um, only the companies that are making a few in batches and say this is all you get are really avoiding that problem because they'll say, all right, you can't order it ever again. Um, and uh, then Bach and Yamaha and those guys, you know, of course, they're spitting out a million and then they usually have them on, on hand and they're in stock. But uh, the more you make, the lower the price goes. Long story short, that's my Stork mouthpiece story. I eventually met John and Phyllis at the ITG when I was showing there. Very nice people. And uh, you know, at that point, I finally had matured to the point where I understood why it took so long and I wasn't you know, blaming them for anything anymore. But when I was younger, I really thought they were to blame for my issues because I didn't have my mouthpiece. That's silly, you know? We really shouldn't think that way. Until you have it in your hand, it's not yours. Uh, this is the Stork 7P. Let me just play it on a box Strat 37. It is shallow. Um, my lips are not bottoming out in the cup, and that's mainly because they don't really protrude into there very far. Uh, because I use aperture control embouchure, then I don't have that issue. But for those of you using pressure, mouthpiece pressure, you may feel the bottom of the cup on this mouthpiece because it's shallower. Yeah, it feels fine. Uh, I would say that the rim is more comfortable than the Yamaha review I did. Um, so if you're looking for a semi-flat rim that's still fairly narrow, this might fit the bill. The sound is really vibrant and beautiful. I love the sound. good, but it has just such a nice, vibrant color to it. Um, I would definitely say that if you're looking for a colorful sounding mouthpiece, this would fit the bill. It's quite small for me because I play closer to the equivalent of a 2C diameter, so it feels very small to me. Um, and with all these reviews that I do on these mouthpieces, some of them are going to be too big and too small. You'll hear that feedback. It doesn't mean it might not be right for you. So whatever I say about mouthpieces here, Take it with a grain of salt because you're not me. So if I say I don't like it, it doesn't mean you won't. Or if I say I love it, it doesn't mean you will love it too. Um, you need to find the mouthpiece that really fits your aperture control size, if you even use aperture control. And if you're using mouthpiece pressure, 
anybody's guess as to what's going to fit you. Um, at that point, I would definitely fly into Denver and have a consult um, and try different mouthpieces. You know, pay the fee to come in and do a consultation and have us help you because the professional help will help you so much. And we have people doing that all the time. I mean, uh, almost every day somebody's coming in here and being fit for mouthpiece parts because that is such a serious issue. Um, so with that said, if you had smaller lips and a smaller dental structure than me, or let's say you're a young person and you just have a smaller body in the first place, the seven diameter might be good for you. If this was a 2P, then I might like it a lot more. Um, I didn't play a lot on it. Let me do some wider intervals. <laughs> I find that because it's so small, um, my lips feel a little bit cramped. Uh, but you know, if your aperture and your embouchure and your body were the right size, this diameter might fit. But the P, I wouldn't be afraid of that. It could work well as a lead mouthpiece. It doesn't sound overly bright. It's got a nice, warm, um, beautiful tone to it. I'm going to play it on the Summit. Um, well, let's let's play it on the Summit one. I've got this. Summit Midnight, Summit One, with the big number eight bell. Yeah, it's still small, but it's much easier on this horn. And uh, it feels good. Uh, I would say, you know, it probably would be a good mouthpiece for lead plane, maybe commercial plane, maybe piccolo trumpet plane. Um, but I would also say that if you are switching between all the genres, you might want to stay on the exact same rim shape and diameter for all of them. Because if you're changing the diameter for a small instrument and you're playing a smaller diameter like a seven, when normally say you play a three, you're gonna mess up your embouchure quite a bit. And very few people have had success with that for more than a few months. Um, and I'm talking the best players in the world struggle with this problem. It's better to just stay on the same rim shape and rim diameter and then change the other variables. And that's why, of course, we make the spectrotone, right? Uh, but this is the Stork 7P. Felt really good, sounds good. I'm gonna compare it real quick to the spectrotone yellow because uh, I have one sitting right here. It's very different. This yellow is set up uh, to have kind of a bigger, broader tone. It's still semi-bright. Um, and yeah, it, you know, I love the feeling of this rim on the Spectratone. It feels perfect, like perfectly comfortable. The rim on the Stork, in comparison, is a little too narrow for me. Um, it feels like it's not hitting my high point um, in a way that makes it comfortable, and I wouldn't want to play on it for a very long time, mainly because it feels like it's you know probably cutting off some blood flow. So, but that is the Stork 7P. Um, if you have anything to add to that, feel free to comment. If you have questions, let me know. If there's a specific mouthpiece you want to hear, uh, and that could be Harrelson mouthpiece or any others, then let me know. And uh, remember, Trumpet Momentum does launch this week. So if you're struggling with range, endurance, flexibility, slotting, airflow, um, or tone production, uh, musicality, just having a regular routine to build up your strength and endurance, um, or just learning the physics of how to play the trumpet properly rather than using mouthpiece pressure, then you want to check out Trumpet Momentum because that system is something I developed to help you specifically get through all that stuff and master it. So um, we're launching that this week. It'll be on YouTube and uh, all you have to do is subscribe. Um, so it's a monthly fee, it's not real expensive, and it's worth every penny. All right, I'll see you guys in the next review.